Hi, I'm Shelly, Shelly Corbett. I'm here in Seattle and I am a toy photographer. Actually, actually, I don't know what I am. I'm a photographer that happens to be photographing toys. And Lens Baby was kind enough to send me their latest toy, the Lens Baby Soft Focus 2 Macro Kit. And I have been tasked to put it through its paces. Part of the fun of macro photography is that you got to kind of roll with the chaos. I read that in a book recently. I loved that phrasing when it comes to macro photography because you just you're always exploring and looking ex and just seeing what's out there but you're looking at it on this like really small level so even though out here it looks beautiful and this would be an amazing place to photograph in the golden hour in fact it is amazing to photograph then that's not what I'm looking for I'm looking for small bits of interesting textures and moss lichen interesting light uh, places where little toys might magically sort of hang out. So it's a little bit of, a, it's going to be a little bit of a hunt, but you know, that's part of the fun of being a macro photographer. So I'm going to, got my lens baby lenses, I got some toys in my backpack, and we're just going to do some wanderings and see what we can find and put this new little set through its paces. So come join me. Let's go have some fun. I'm gathering some flowers. I probably shouldn't be picking these, but I have an idea. I've got a toy. I need some flowers, and the flowers I really want to get are somewhere else uh, behind a wall of water and mud, which isn't going to work. But these are super cute. So we're going to find, now we're going to go, I got a toy. I got the flowers. Now let's go find a place to set this sucker up. See what we can do. When I first started taking photos of toys, I didn't really know how best to approach them. And then it sort of dawned on me that the scale that they're at is a macro scale. And so now I realize I'm a macro photographer. Now, not all toys are macro. Not all toys would be considered macro photography because toys, like everything else, come in a variety of scales. The toys that I tend to choose tend to be pretty small. So Fozzie the Bear... Probably one of the bigger toys that I would gravitate towards. But I brought a variety with me for this little adventure so we can just try some big ones and some small ones and just see what the Soft Focus 2 and the Sweet 50 with those macro filters are going to get us. Because it's all about experimentation, at least for me. I never, never quite know what I'm going to capture, so I like to play around. Now he looks good. All right. A little windy. We'll see what happens. Looks like it's an F4 on that one, which is not bad. It's a little more wide open than I would normally do, but the F2 looked good. I'm going to try it with the uh, with the soft focus though, because I think the soft focus with this is also going to look really good. But I want to see what that looks like. So this is why this handy cloth is so nice. Same setup with the, uh, we'll try it with the F4 again. Blue sky would have been nice, but out in the landscape, I'm always looking for leading lines. I'm looking for interesting textures. I'm looking for what's going on in the background as much as what's going on in the foreground because what's happening behind the figure is where the interest is going to come. How am I going to separate the figure from the background? What's, uh, what's going on here? Light's a little flat. Probably, this is when I probably should get a little light out. Just a little, just see what it, how that helps.
All right, so we're here at the puddle. Should not be here this time of year. And I really wasn't gonna play in the puddle today. I was thinking mostly for moss and finding lichen, but kind of the macro photographer way is search and look and take advantage of what's presented to you. Puddle's a little gross this time of year, but you know, I got one photo that might be kind of cute here. So I'm gonna set it up and uh, we'll see what it looks like. But if it was a little bit brighter, maybe the sun will come out by the time I get this set up. Is the soft focus with the spectral highlights on a soft focus can be so lovely. So it's gonna take me a minute to get that set up. So I'm gonna work on that and hopefully we'll get a little sun and then it'll be magic. So what's cool about the, about the soft focus too is it comes with these little aperture rings and they are the creative aperture effects kit and it comes in four different sizes and so there's a small circle medium and large and then there's a star so I'm going to start with the medium and just see how it goes they're really easy to to swap out got this handy little tool that's magnetic that just pulls them right out magnifying filter back on plus two we're going to start with there I have a feeling I might go to plus one on this one but we'll see just never know. So macro photography is what they call any photography where you want to focus on something smaller and, and be closer to your subject. All sorts of technical things like one to one and one to five and how much of the image fills your frame when back in the day when everyone was on film. But you know, you're just like, it's basically anytime you want to focus on something small and get close up, most lenses won't focus closer than like, you know, eight inches or whatever. So if you want to get closer than that for whatever your subject is, being at being flowers or insects or soap bubbles or all the other crazy things that people photograph, uh, moss, lichen, uh, you're going to want it. water droplets, also very popular. You're going to need something that's going to allow you to get closer. Macro is just basically anything, anything that's small. And then my, not, like I said, not all toys are small. My toys that I tend to photograph are small, so they do need uh, a macro attachment so I can get the focus that I want. So I'm gonna see what we can do with this guy. So right now what I'm trying to do, and it's, uh, I may be over my head on this one, is to get this little uh, pseudo boat not quite a boat, not quite a plane, and I put some wings on it, because, you know, imagination, uh, f hovering right above the surface of the water, but this is always a little tricky. And even though I play with these at home and get them set up, rarely do they do what I want them to do when I'm out here. <laughs> like, like now! clamps on clamps and I still have one left over because whenever you start moving into small things lighting is never quite what you need it to be so we're going to see if we can throw a little extra light on her all right let's see what that looks like this should be interesting If I wanted to get really close, I'd probably put the four on, but I want to back up a little bit and see what it looks like. See if I can still do this. She looks very happy. I like happy photos. Maybe, ha, huh, here's a thought. Maybe that's why I like toys. They're happy. These guys are very happy. So I moved to the Sweet 50 so I can just see what, what I'm gonna get with this one and see if, it's, if I'm going to like it better, I like to, to change my lenses and, and just try the different effects because I never can quite know if it's going to be what I want until I actually just see it through the camera. I guess the proof is in the pudding is see it through the lens. And then when you get it, it always, I don't know, there's a real f sense of feeling of accomplishment when you can make something as crazy like this work. an awful lot of blur in that one it was wide open so I'm gonna stop it down a little bit since I got plenty of light and see 
Uh, man, I just love the Sweet 50. It is, was my first lens, still my favorite lens. All right, that was very successful. So this was a super fun little find. Uh, we're not in peak moss season here in the Pacific Northwest right now, so moss is a little hard to, to come by, but look, we've got this great rotten log, and the moss is creating some nice leading lines, and it's nice little shady location because we've got a sunny day, a rare sunny day here in the Pacific Northwest, and so I'm just like, hmm, wonder what that's going to look like through the lens and like really trying to get better about not prejudging a location and thinking about it in more generalities like lighting and the background and does it make sense with this figure and in this particular case we got probably a lot a little bit too much green going on but swamp monster on a green motorbike next to the swamp i don't know kind of looked amusing All right, this is cool. I love these leaves. Don't ask me why, but somehow this, this structure of this tree, and the light behind it, and the fact that they're in shadow, it has possibilities, and this is why we're just gonna try. I'm gonna just put a toy up and see what it looks like. I got one that I set up that's hanging, and this could be the location for it, so. So I have a, a little girl space girl, and she's gonna be in this tire swing, snoozing. I've done this shot a couple different times, but I realized that all the ones I've done have been sort of male figures, and I'm like, none of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put her little bunny in. When I first started taking toy photos, I started out with my phone. I think it's pretty standard for most people, and then I'm like, ah, I really wanna short depth of field, I want all that beautiful bokeh in the background, and that's when I moved to a traditional 50 millimeter macro, and then I moved to a 100 millimeter macro, and then I got tired of everything looking perfect. So about four or five years ago, I moved over almost exclusively to Lens Baby and haven't really looked back. There's something about these lenses that they add to this magical childhood element, which is what I'm which is my aim. So the story for this one is that she's dreaming of space flight, but she's still a little child with her little friend in the background, which makes me think, I think I should probably do the soft focus because just having that nice little glow would be nice for this. And I love how easy it is to swap lenses. That is nice. But you can really see in the background when you're looking at these how much the those discs do to the background. So now I'm gonna try it with the Sweet 15 just so I can just see what the two, what the difference is gonna look like. So now I just, I had the, the soft focus two on. Now I'm moving to the uh, Sweet 50, which is clearly a lens I have more comfort with, but so I really know this one backwards and forwards. So we'll see what we can do. Sometimes it's easier with macro photography not to move your focus ring, but literally move yourself in and out to get focus. I find I, the bob Call the focus bob. I don't know if anyone else does that. I'm sure everyone does. So what's cool about this one is that she really looks like she's just dripping, just dripping out of the tree. And I like how the bunny is in the background. Yeah, that's, boy, both of them. That's gonna be a hard choice, choosing between the two. So one of the reasons that I chose this tree is one, I don't have to get on the ground Let's, you know, that's, I mean, anytime as a macro photographer, you don't have to get on the ground, kind of nice. Uh, so that was one 
one reason why I chose this spot. The other one was that she is in the shade, but the background is lit and is bright. So I knew I was going to get really good separation between the figure and the ground. So that was important to me. So that, that was a, just a, a huge part of like looking at this and going, ah, light bulb moment. That looks interesting. And I think the photos sort of proved that that was good. But that's just years of experience of doing this, of knowing what is interesting to me, what the story I'm telling. And ultimately, my stories all revolve around, okay, life's a little complicated right now. So I like my photos to be relaxing and peaceful and uh, just a, a respite when you're strolling through whatever platform you're on. I had somebody comment the other day on a photo that had a swamp monster getting up on a boat that had Scooby-Doo on it and someone said that photo even though there's a monster in it was still relaxing and I guess that's kind of where my goal is which uh, you know works doesn't work for everybody a lot of people like their photos to be more action oriented I also like my photos to represent ideas like adventure imagination childhood and and I'll admit an idealized childhood, because for most people, childhood not this, you know, uh, leave it to be her moment, uh, or father knows best. So there's a lot of my wants and desires, needs for adventure and peace and relaxation and imagination and a world filled with magic. That's what I like to fill my photos with. So all of that represented with a little girl in her little spacesuit with her her plans for a rocket ship and her little buddy in the background having a little snooze because imagination is exhausting. He does look pretty cute in there. And look, I got the sun. The sun went away. You just have to wait. But the great thing about macro photography is you don't have the light, just wait five seconds and it moves so fast across the plane of your view that it will, it will, go from bright sun to shade in about, what, five minutes? He's very cute. I like that. So he's completely um, white. It's really hard to photograph him. Like, where is the focus? I don't know. Focus peaking is failing me. Can't decide if I like those grass in the background. Guess I'm gonna have to wait. See that hole. Okay, so why the heck does an adult woman run around a park in the mud and get in the brambles for a toy photo of all things mm, because it's fun and it's all about the process it's never about the the result it's the path it's the creative path whatever you decide to do you have to do it for you it doesn't matter i mean if you're taking flowers or insects or water bubbles or cat, your dog, doesn't your kids, whatever you want to focus on and photograph, you do it for yourself. Now for anybody or anything or any platform in the world, doesn't matter. Do it for yourself because the only person you have to please is you. And that's why for me, the best photos are the ones when I look through the viewfinder and I laugh. And if I please me, that's a good day. All right, so I spotted some moss. So now I'm setting up the soft focus too with, with all of the macro filters again, the two, the one, and the four, and we'll see what happens. Use this cute little lens cloth. Minimize my dust. One thing about macro photography is you cannot Speed is not the thing. All right. Super tiny figure. Let's go see what happens. Oh, I'm going to want a bounce card for this. I can't imagine there's going to be light where I'm at. 
Okay, first, impressive that I managed to get that guy to stand up. So this is zen quality, the toy photography. Prairie dog. Little tiny prairie dog. So what's cool about macro is there's a tree in the background falling over nice strong horizontal lines and with the way the blur is in the background it makes it look like it's a I don't know some far off mountaintop I love it when the environment does that that is a that's a very cool little photo I like that that was fun and so that was with a soft focus 2 with the largest aperture ring, and I've got the four, the two, and the one on it, and it looks like I shot it with a, I had a F4 on that one, so we'll go see what that looks like. What I'm looking for in a location is, is it interesting? Does it fit my figure? How is the lighting and is there is there some texture that I can work with and uh, can I hide my supports or some secondary options and and then not to prejudge too much but see what it looks like through the lens before I say yay or nay because chances are it's going to look amazing and I've seen these lenses turn the ugliest mud puddle into the most awesome piece of magic. All right, so it's a, uh, this is a, I don't know, cute little bush. It's got flowers on it though, and one never walks by flowers without stopping. And I happen to have this little ladybug that I had set up on a bike. Probably not the best figure for this, but why not see if we can make it work? And that's part of the just trying things idea. So I'm gonna switch lenses, because with those flowers in bloom, I think a soft focus is gonna be super cute with this. Get some fun effects. And I want to get a little bit of the background and place her in the situation, so I'm going to go with a plus two rather than a one or a four. Let's see what we can do. That is the fun of toy photography is being able to make anything happen. Any childhood whimsical idea that you can think of, you can create, including a ladybug on a motorbike using a little tree branch for her road. The only thing I'm missing on this one is some light. She's a little dark. Well, at least I nailed focus. That's always good. Oh, come on. Doesn't she look cute? Okay, so I have chosen what I think is probably the ugliest spot I can think of in this park. There's nothing interesting going on here. There's some, some cement, some grass, some mud. But let's just see if we can throw some lens baby magic on it and create something slightly interesting right here. All right, nothing interesting. The background's not even interesting. This could be a failed experiment. But experiments, that's what we do, right? Let's go. There's a little soft focus. I have no idea what I'm doing, but what the heck. All right, that's totally not going to work. Something about a garbage can in the background. With, even on maximum blur, I got nothing. I'm going to take the photo so you can see how... Well, nah, it's still pretty bad. Okay. Adjusted my composition ever so slightly. Well, maybe it works better. Well, who knows? point of doing this is just seeing how how far can you push taking something that's 
really terrible and still making something good out of it. Oh yeah. So now I just swapped out my lens and I moved over to the Sweet 50 and it has a plus two macro on it. So a little bit of magnification and it made the little background pretty blurry. We got it wide open so it's 2.5 because, you know, why not? Maybe we'll go back. We're going to drop down to 2.8. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, other than the fact that the lighting sucks, but I can fix that. This is why it's always handy to have at least one little light with you. Even the little grass looks cute. Okay, gotta work on my focus. That's the toughest thing about macro is really being able to steady your camera because there's no such thing as image stabilization with these lenses. So you wanna, some people say hold your breath, some people say breathe through it. Uh, everyone's got to do their own thing. Didn't quite nail focus. And I've moved my composer over so that it, the sweet spot is right where his face is. Because that's where I want it. Made a cute little photo out of it. I look forward to checking out what that looks like when I get home. And uh, if nothing else, it'll be Instagram fodder. All right, I'm gonna get packed up for the next location. Like I wanna go into the woods, see what happens. All right. All right. Ready to go to the next location. All right, it's a little sunny out here. We're heading towards midday. And my subjects are a bit reflective, so I'm really cognizant of the fact that if I don't find some shade, they're gonna just glow, which could be good, but probably not the look I'm looking for. All right, besides it's hot and I'm a wimp. All right. Nice little light there. It's like, I mean the ground, the rocky ground isn't ideal, but it's got this, got the different foliage and the grass and let's see, maybe, oh, you know what? I have a little elephant, might be very cute down there. So it's like always having that variety of toys is good. Part of being a macro photographer, really, especially a nature photographer, is embracing and enjoying and appreciating the outdoors and how beautiful our planet is, even on a macro scale, even on the smallest level. And so that's really quite a bit of fun. I want to go super close up on this guy, so we're going to add another filter. And the Zen part is, is just embracing the, the unexpected, embracing whatever you're given and making the best of it. There are no bad photos, just interesting opportunities. I feel like I'm in the Serengeti. That's what's, I mean, look, I mean, like I got a little elephant, he's in the middle of the grass and it, for all you know, for all I know, he is in the middle of Africa. That's just so cute. So uh, hanging out in nature, I mean, it's, everyone's, I think, more aware of the restorative powers of nature, especially with the pandemic and going in outside and just getting a break from life. And this is macro photography with toys, nature, whatever you want to do. It's just a really fun part of that. And I find that just... Spending an afternoon, an hour or two, going to the local park with my toys and photographing them just makes everything better and the day better. And life doesn't feel quite as hopeless sometimes doing that. So for me, that's 
it's just, it refills, it refills a part of me that it sometimes gets drained just dealing with life. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy adventure in my local park. I had a lot of fun showing you uh, this new product by Lens Baby. Thank you, Lens Baby, for allowing me to show off your products. It's been a lot of fun and taking some fun toy photos. Always a good time. I hope you will join me in this crazy macro world. It's a fun way to explore the universe that we live in, appreciate nature, appreciate the little things in life and see the world through a new way, through, uh, through your camera, photography, your toys, whatever your subject is. So join me uh, in the fun world of macro photography and you can find me and more of my work at ShellyCorbett.com and I will see you around the internet. Thanks for watching. Take care.